and then bring them under this, I guess you'd call it a corporate uh, umbrella, so that nothing will be able to grow without these corporations. So it's deeply concerning, and I do. I definitely think it is a, uh, it's a takeover of, of our natural food supply. Uh, we agree there, uh, Michael, and, you know, in, in our work, we, we're getting these reports from all over the place, you know. New Zealand's a farming community too, but even through the states, people are saying, well, you know, this is our job, we're farmers, and, and we are planting GMO seed, but we wouldn't dare have GMO seed on our, our own properties. Um, certainly seems that it's being corporatised. Of course, we have seed banks set up um, all over the planet now, um, protecting those natural seeds, and that, that was done and dusted quite some time ago. So this has been the agenda for a very long time, and uh, and now we're seeing it play out. I mean, it's just total destruction. It's not just destruction of, of human beings, but our animals, our plant life. You know, I need to be able to feed my family from what I grow, and uh, that's that's getting increasingly harder. Uh, you know, we're sitting here in uh, July, middle of winter here in New Zealand, and I still have strawberries in my garden, which is really bizarre. We've, we've had a very mild, mild winter here in comparison to others, and, and of course this is weather modification at its finest. But, um, you know, obviously the strawberries aren't ripening, but the fact that they're still growing flowers, um, you know, yesterday my cat bought in a... a a tiny little newborn bird. Uh, it's July. <laughs> it's not spring, and um, so yeah, there's, everything's a little messed up. You know, along those same lines, I was wondering um, because the I received some berries from one of the farmers here that is actually um, getting those berries off of the agricultural land that's owned by uh, um, Evergreen aviation and they, it was told to me that these are are organic and I'm wondering what is the criteria for organic and can GMO seeds be called organic? Well I'm not sure about that but I think that they're moving towards that and, and what they want is complete control uh, of our food supply and one of the things that uh, I don't I think we briefly mentioned on was the weather control the weather modification applications uh, of these programs, and uh, one of the things that we covered in the film was a military document can be found on the internet called "Owning the Weather by 2025." That's an expressed interest of our military. Um, first time that I heard that, I said, "Who would want to own the weather?" And somebody explained it to me. And then I listened to a statement that geoengineer David Keith had made. He had stated that geoengineering gives man godlike power. And it really struck me as to why would somebody want to control the weather. If you control the weather, you can control everything. Uh, you can literally use it for warfare applications. Uh, and it was actually used in Vietnam. Um, the Ho Chi Minh Trail was flooded with, I believe it was 13 feet of rain in less than one hour. And that was back uh, about 40 years ago. So... Obviously, our technology has increased greatly. But if you control the weather, you can completely control the food supply. And uh, going back to, I'm trying to think who said it, one of these people who call themselves the elite, they said if you want to control countries, control the oil. If you want to control people, control the food. So it does. It gives uh, godlike power, tremendous leverage, uh, if you have countries that simply want to grow natural organic foods and you control the weather and you want to own and control the food supply, you can just send a drought over there. And that's actually what I think we're seeing right now, not only in uh, in areas of Africa. I know areas of Africa have drought, and uh, I believe that's due to geoengineering. But if you look at what has happened uh, in the Midwest, we saw a tremendous flooding. And right. look at who benefited from that. Um, one, they decreased the food supply, um, and, and that's actually been stated uh, as one of the agendas of these criminal uh, elite people to decrease the food supply. But B, they opened up levees and flooded farmlands, and now corporations are buying up uh, those farmlands 
and right. uh, pennies on the dollar. So it's uh, and, and that, that, that's happening here too with our quaked land, um, Michael. People have been ordered off their land now. There'll be up to 10,000 people displaced, moved. Um, and, you know, we know what, what will happen with those lands. So, so we're experiencing that here. It's happening in Canada. It's happening through the U.S. And um, goodness knows only, goodness knows what is happening in Japan. You know, these are just horrific events that we're facing. Now, you were talking about um, David Keith, and um, I, Dane Wigington, just, just to go back to your film, um, Dane Wigington questioned um, these, this panel of geoengineers, you know, saying, you know, air quality studies um, stated sub-micron particles are particularly harmful for respiration, and he pointed that out um, all through um, the discussions that this hadn't been mentioned. Um, he queried the studies done on toxifying waters and soils. In other words, what will be the effects of these materials on human health? Now, that question was skirted, and um, w Wigington continued... Um, you know, so, you know, let me c clarify. Ten megatons of aluminium dumped into the atmosphere would have no human health impacts. Keith then said uh, they're just beginning to research aluminium and uh, publish nothing. We haven't done anything serious on aluminium, so there could be something terrible that we will find tomorrow that we haven't looked at. Now, and then Dr. John Holdren stated we might get desperate enough to use it. But, Michael, they already are using this globally. Uh, and, you know, our governments are saying that, well, it's not really going on, but if, if we do use it, it will be sulfur um, put into the air. But, but we know now that um, aluminium is four times more conductive to, to their purposes. So, um, and also, um, you know, we had David Keith telling us that... Um, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more like free riding on our grandkids. What kind of a comment is that? You know, right. these are the scientists that we're supposed to be uh, leaving with our, our future. Well, it's, um, it's and excuse me, Michael, if we could get you to, to speak up just a little bit, please. Okay, doing my best. Um, it is deeply concerning, and what they're doing is selling some very ominous programs to an unsuspecting public, stating, uh, as my co-producer, G. Edward Griffin, stated, they're going to come out and say, when it comes out that they're doing it, they're going to come out and say, we did it for your good, for the benefit of, of society, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're stating that these programs are to mitigate global warming. Um, and actually, there are a number of studies which show that uh, putting aerosols into the sky will increase the temperature because those aerosols act as a blanket, and we have actually seen an increase in nighttime highs since these programs uh, have been started. So uh, what they're doing is developing the sales strategy, getting public support. Uh, I think it'd be very difficult for uh, the corporations, the people who are orchestrating these programs to say, you know, we would like to uh, control the weather because we want money, we want power, we want control of the food. It's going to hurt a lot of you because geoengineers are very open uh, about the risks. Um, they state there will be winners and losers, uh, droughts in certain areas, you know, and uh, a lot of neg negative effects. However, they are stating we might have to do it to save the planet. So it's very difficult to sell uh, the programs with what they want to do to the public. So what they're doing is using deception and using this uh, – global warming scenario as a, uh, as a cover for it. Yes, indeed. They, they certainly seem to be. Can we talk about some of the human health effects that you know of, Michael, associated with the aluminum, barium, and strontium? Absolutely. And we know that they're spraying much more than that. Um, right, but, right, uh, right. Uh, a number of health effects, but let's talk about aluminum because that's been found in the, in the highest quantity. Uh, aluminum is very toxic, aluminum oxide, uh, to human health, and it's interesting since the inception of these programs, we've seen a dramatic increase in aluminum-related illnesses, uh, many which are neurological. Uh, one that many of us can relate to 
uh, is Alzheimer's. And here uh, in L.A. County, we've seen over a 200% increase in Alzheimer's in the 10-year period. So we've also seen a great increase uh, in other aluminum-related illnesses. So uh, without a doubt, it, it's a deep concern. We interviewed Dr. Bourne uh, for the film, and she's a, uh, an aluminum expert, and she was deeply concerned uh, about what's going on and, uh, and stated that aluminum is accumulative, so it will accumulate in the body. And over time, as it does that, uh, my understanding is it actually locks up uh, natural systems. She said, over time, what it will do is compromise the immune system, uh, leading to cancers and a bunch of other illnesses. So aluminum is, is uh, again, very concerning, uh, and we're breathing this in every day. A number of people uh, have gotten aluminum tests and found that their levels are very high. Uh, barium. Barium is extremely toxic, and it will uh, lower our immune system. And, uh, again, people have been testing very high uh, in barium. So one area in Mojave County, for example, uh, about 30 people got tested. A number of them were very high. Uh, some, I believe, even a 1,000 times over the level that's considered to be elevated. So deeply concerning. But, uh, again, it will compromise our immune system, uh, but it also leads to high blood pressure. So... Uh, we can expect to see more strokes, heart attacks, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, with our inhalation of barium. And uh, strontium is actually a carcinogen. So it is a catalyst to cancer, and, of course, we've seen uh, a number uh, of different cancers just in the past 10 years, and these things all together, along with uh, lead is being found, the, the biologicals that you had discussed, it's, uh, it's deeply concerning, and I think it brings all the why we're seeing uh, a bunch of illnesses now. Right. The, um, the, the um, aluminium also, you know, back to plants again, it, it, uh, it locks up the, um, it compromises the root system and locks it up, doesn't it? So, you know, the aluminium and barium is systemic with the plants. Now, um, we have... Uh, Bill from the chat room saying the Universal um, Declaration of Human Rights, the G Geneva Convention, the very core of the international human law and the US, law, US laws all forbid the use of humans as uninformed test subjects for our safety. Why isn't there a massive grass movement being organized to force compliance of these international laws? Well, I, I think the reason is uh, the... the uh the people who are in power have been very effective at getting us uh, distracted from really what's going on. And, and people are concerned about what perhaps maybe a celebrity is wearing. Uh, they might be, be uh, focused on the issues of life, and, and uh, you know, it's deeply concerning. However, what I've seen in terms of the movement, especially in the past year, uh, a number of people are getting active. People are getting concerned. They're starting to stand up for the rights. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to see. So uh, for the first time, I think that we're seeing a shift. And uh, although it's at the beginning, uh, it's a powerful shift. So people are starting to get active. And, uh, you know, it's up to us, both of us who know. And, and i got to appreciate what you're doing uh, with the radio show, getting the word out to, uh, you know, to thousands of people. And, and, and that's just uh, one, one of the things that we can do. We can do many different things. But, but I think the shift is happening. But we would hope, we would hope that there would be millions out in the streets. Yes. Right. Right. Agreed. You know, along those same lines, Michael, are there any, um, any remedies, any suggestions that you have been made aware of, of how the general population can help their bodies detox from these chemicals? Have you heard of any, anything related to that? Well, we, I've spoken to a number of uh, healthcare practitioners, and I actually use chelation. So I use, uh, and again, I would talk to a healthcare professional, but for me, I use things that uh, that remove heavy metals out of my body. Uh, chlorella, bentonite is good. Um, Zeal 